Hi, I'm Nellie Campman, author of A Haunted History of Columbus, Ohio. Today I am in Green Lawn Cemetery, one of the most beautiful places in Columbus, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the history of the Victorian section of the cemetery. Green Lawn Cemetery was founded in a time when they were starting to use a more park-like setting for cemeteries. Before that, cemeteries were basically just graveyards where they didn't expect anybody to ever want to come unless they were just to bury somebody or to come mourn. With places like Green Lawn, they tried to make them as beautiful as possible, as restful as possible, and make people want to come visit them just to spend time and visit they did. Graveyards became a place of recreation and people would even come to have picnics here and stuff like that. So it became a nice place to spend time in and not just a place for mourning. And if you look around the cemetery you will find here and there graves that look quite a bit older than the other ones around, like this one here. Um, let's get up on it and see what date it's from. And wouldn't you know it, hey, check this out. Hopefully uh, you can see that well enough on the screen, but uh, this person died in 1844. But Green Lawn Cemetery was not established till 1848. I suppose you're wondering what the deal is with that. In the early days of Columbus, they had graveyards in a few different places around the city. Eventually, um, kind of as a combination of a health issue and the fact that the real estate was becoming valuable, they decided that they needed to move the cemeteries out of that part of the city. And they worked out a deal with Green Lawn Cemetery where Green Lawn would accept the old graves and they had the bodies relocated here. Uh, you can see just along a lot of these really old ones, you can see that they're really kind of darkened and sooty. Again, here's one of the older grave markers. And if you look over this way, the one with the crazy uh, plant like thing on the top, that monument is actually made out of metal. And here we have the grave of Line Starling, one of the founders of Columbus. Uh, personally, I kind of think of him as being a bit of a doofus. The reason for that is um, there's a couple of letters that he wrote to his sister back in Kentucky in the early days. And he would whine and whine and whine about how homely and stuck up and... Oh, that's a word for it. <laughs> uncivilized the women of Columbus were in the early days. Oh, he just really bash them. It was kind of pathetic. And then he'd write to his sister and complain, gosh, you know, nobody here likes him and he can't find anybody to marry and he just doesn't know why. So, like I said, he's a doofus. Let's see a little more of the cemetery back there. Like I said, it's a very, very pretty place. And we are coming down to one of my favorite headstones. As you can see, belong to a Civil War veteran. Check out this stone. It's very, very cool, very patriotic. And here we have the grave of Gustavus Swan. I'm curious as to what happened to his head. His head used to be in the center of those pillars there. And of course we can't go into a cemetery without the obligatory shot of an angel monument. The Walcott family has been in Columbus, gosh, since the early years. Um, you might be familiar with Walcott Road out on the west side. It was named after them. 